and we are joined on the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline, where all guests and callers join us. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop by DeMichael Cole, Grizzlies beat writer and co-host of Locked On Grizzlies. DeMichael, thank you for taking so much time to join us for our last show of 2023. Hey, I, I'm a privilege. So y'all, y'all brought me on the last show of the year. It make me feel like I'm somebody important. But, uh... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, look, you were popping on social media when everything went down with Ja a couple of days ago, and you do some great work. So we'll get into all that, and we wanted to get to hear more from you. But before we get into all that, going on the court, how would you describe the Grizzly season so far? I mean, the, 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 they look like the Pistons to start. You get John Morant back and you can't lose a game. We know he didn't play last night and you lose to the Nuggets. But besides that, you have been rolling. How would you describe the Grizzly season so far? Guys, it's funny because you, you, you're you saying the Grizzly season, but around here they're calling the Grizzly seasons. You know what it is. <laughs> it feels like two different seasons in one, right? There's the first season that's pre John, and then there's uh, the second season. You know, when I was talking to a lot of the players, remember uh, when John came back, it was the second night of a back-to-back. And we were out in Oklahoma, and I'm in the locker room with the guys, and they're like, it's it's, it's, about to, it's about to feel like a new season. Like, that was kind of the theme. You know, wow. this is an entire different season. You know, and, and and it's kind of what they were taking on. Now the coaches, you know, Taylor Jenkins, you know, he, he's a coach, but he doesn't have that mentality. You know, he feels like those 25 games were critical in preparing them for that stretch. But for the players, it was more so like renewed energy. And uh, John Morant, like, because, you know, people look at it from the outside and they say, man, how does one player make a team so much drastically better? You're talking about a team that's 6-20 and 20 without him mm. and 4-0 with him. But it's not that simple. It's it's basically uh, the best way I can describe it, guys, is he's a connector for this team. Without him, you have a bunch of guys who are playing out of position in different positions. You know, I, I watched the Kings a decent amount. So let, if I would go back to the Kings last year, it's like if you have, you know, De'Aaron Fox out for a game and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, Malik Monk steps in to the starting lineup and he becomes your number one option and Keegan Murray instead of most of his shots you know, it's rookie year being spot up three point shots and things like that. Now he has to be more creative as a scorer and things like that because someone has to pick up the load. And that's kind of what's happened in Memphis. You know, Desmond Bain, you know, basically has become a de facto point guard while John Morant is out. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. is amongst, you know, uh, has kind of developed into one of the best isolation scorers in the league. And it's happened because that's how he's had to play. So, uh, when Ja gets back, it's kind of like now everyone's settled back into the idea of roles. You know, now Dez can be kind of a secondary playmaker. You know, Jaron can be a third option offensively. Uh, all these other guys who had to dribble and create shots for themselves can now just spot up, take easy looks. And, of course, they push the tempo and they get easier looks and transition because of it. Because of it. Now that Jaw's back, I mean, yeah, you guys sit at, at 10 and 20 right now. What is, what's like the, the hope or the goal uh, for the Grizzlies this year? I mean, you, you definitely put yourself behind the eight ball, but is there play in hopes? I mean, playoff hopes? Is it just kind of try and recoup the season the best you can? What, what's really the hope out there uh, for the Grizzlies this year? Oh, oh, they, they think they can do the thing, man. They, they think that, um, you know, playoffs and, and play in are, are hopes. Now, uh, from a realistic perspective, People like right now, they're 10 and 20. A lot of people have thrown out the number, you know, for the rest of the way, they'd have to go 31 and 21 to right. get to 40, 41. If you look at the past couple years, you know, when you talk about that 19, 8 seed, 10 seed range, 41 wins has typically uh, been kind of a, a good barometer to get you there. And the Grizzlies basically, you know, uh, if you go back to the win percentages from the last two years when they won 56 games a couple years ago when they won 51 games last season, if they play at a comparable, you know, a win pace, then that would put them in position for a play-in or a playoff spot. And considering that they won their first game, four games without job, now they've won four out of five, uh, they are on that type of track. But as we know, as you guys know, the Western Conference is so tough, it, there's no let up. Like you win your first four games, it's like, okay, no sweat. Now you got to go to Denver and now you got to go to the Clippers. <laughs> and then when you get back home, you got to take on the Kings. So it's like, it's no let up. But uh, I'll say this they still feel like if they get in that play in, you know, anything can happen. Remember, uh, this is a Grizzlies team. It was only three years ago where Steph Curry and yep. this is the year 
Thompson was out. Remember, uh, the Warriors kind of started get, getting something going with Steph Curry, Poole, Draymond Green, and they met the Grizzlies in the play-in, and no one gave the Grizzlies a chance uh, that year. No one uh, thought that they beat them. And and John Morant, I think, had 36 points, uh, made the game winner, and they ended up playing the Utah Jazz, uh, the number one seed in the first round that year. Talking to DeMichael Cole, Grizzlies beat writer, co-host of Locked on Grizzlies. All right, DeMichael, we got to talk about it because it was such a big story. And you were a bit in the middle of it with DMs from national analysts and things like that. When it comes to the John Morant dance controversy, where do you think the misunderstanding was? Some people saying that, well, if there were gun celebrations in the dance and he shouldn't have done it. Where do you think that misunderstanding was? And how do you think Ja should, I guess, I, I don't want to use the word behave, but how should Ja kind of go about things moving forward as a lot of us here are trying to be our authentic selves, but not to a fault? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just summed it up at the end perfectly. That's kind of the battle with Ja right now. And quite frankly, from talking to him, Everything that I sense is Ja wants to be Ja. He always says it, whether he's talking about it on the court, where he's talking about off the court, he always says, I just have to be Ja. Mm-hmm. So you get the sense that he's not going to lose track of who he is, you know, in this process, because that's been the concern for a lot of people, right? They're like, man, you know, like if you think about it, like it's like the league or, or fans, like they want him to act like, you know, some like Ivy League rogue scholar type kid or something. And that's just never been Ja Morant. Yeah. Right. Not, like you're, you're trying to make him something that he's not, and that's going to have a you know impact on his mental and all that stuff. But here's the other side of it. getting getting back to your point with the dance. Uh, I do think like when you break the dance down and you look at the dance, like it, it, it's it was a he did it in New Orleans, which should have been the first thing that people you know paid attention to. Like it was kind of one of those you're you're, you're going to a city. You know, it's like if you do, you know, you go to Atlanta and you do, you know, Atlanta dance or you go to L.A. and you do, you know, a SoCal dance or whatever the case may be. You go to Northern California, you do, you know, one of those Bay Area dances or something right. like that. Like, that's kind of what it was. I do. I will say this, though. There, There is a part of me that thinks, like, yeah, Ja has to understand, like, it, because of the position that he's kind of put himself in that, you know, when he does certain things, it's going to be ridiculed a little bit. Now, if he's willing to deal with that or not, then, you know, that's up to him. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, you can explain yourself and kind of clear yourself of the situation. But still, uh, when you, you put yourself in a position where, you know, he, he's doing the hand gestures and it looks like, you know, he's uh, doing, you know, like, like holding the, you know, doing like gun triggers, like with his hand. But, um, at the same time, you know, it's a popular New Orleans dance. Like, it's popular on TikTok. Uh, so I knew it in the moment what he was doing. And actually, guys, when I saw it, I didn't think that it was going to blow up. Because at first, I just saw, like, you know, it was kind of those those uh, X pages or Twitter pages that uh, just, tro- just troll accounts. Right. So they're like, jobs, you know, doing it. And I'm just like, ah, this will blow over. And then I wake up in the morning, and I see, you know, a New York Post. I see, um, you know, like national publications are talking about TMZ uh, said a parent gun. And I was like, oh, boy, I'm, I'm going to have to write about this. Ain't yeah. I? So, so, yeah, uh, it, I tell you what, though, it's, it's basically this thing where Ja has to find that middle ground. Right. Because uh, he's, he's, he wants to be himself. Like, this is who Ja has always been. He's always been kind of, you know, a big personality. He, he likes to dance. He likes to, you know, talk trash on the court. Uh, talk a little trash, you know, uh, in the media about what's happening on the court. But it's certain, like, it's just certain ways about how his messages will be conveyed, you know, that he has to be mindful of because of that position that he's put himself in. All right, DeMichael Cole, Grizzlies beat writer, co-host of Locked On Grizzlies. One more, DeMichael, one more quick one before I let you go. This might be the hardest one. Look, man, two star point guards going up against each other. Who is more impactful? You can use more impactful. Who is better? Whatever you want to call it. You're starting a franchise right now. De'Aaron Fox or Ja Moran? Man, (laughs) you tricked me when you said to start a franchise right now. Because if I'm Uh, starting a franchise right now, I'd say Ja because, you know, you're a little bit younger. mm -hmm. Uh, I think there's more room to grow in this game where when I watch De'Aaron Fox, he's so polished. Like, he's a better player right now. Like, I love watching him because 
when you when you look at De'Aaron Fox when he came out of college, it was kind of similar to Ja. It was the speed, it was the athleticism. But when you watch him play now, he barely uses that stuff. Yeah. It's more pace. It's more just getting to his spots on the court. He said, "Oh, I want to get to the mid range, you know, um, on the right side of the back." And he gets to his spot and he makes his shots. Like uh, he just he plays so polished. And and I think this is just who he's going to be for the rest of his career. I still don't think we know what Ja is going to be yet. Like we we have an idea that he's just going to be this super explosive point guard. But what's he going to be when you know? Like, is he going to learn like that De'Aaron Fox level where he's become this guy who can change paces? And and just uh, if he wants to play fast, he can beat you that way. He can he can slow it down. He he just I, when I watch De'Aaron Fox, I just love to watch like how polished his game has become from you know his rookie season. So simple answer is if I'm starting franchise from the ground up, I'm choosing job because of you know I just think like we see it right now with this Grizzlies team, like his playmaking, uh, his ability to push the ball in transition. Um, you know, uh, the, the paint pressure that he puts on teams, like you have to collapse the paint. You just need decent shooters around him and you're going to have a, a lot of success. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is the better player right now, though. Don't, I don't, don't, I don't want to get lost in that point. I, I do think that Fox is the better player right now. It's main, a little bit because he's older, but he's just super polished. Like, and, and then the two way part of it. Like, I, I like the fact that a lot of point guards don't guard point guards these days, but De'Aaron Fox. Seeing him guard on the ball, uh, it, it moves me, man. Like I really like seeing that. It's old school, you know. When he plays the Grizzlies, you see him guard Ja Morant and things like that. And I, I just love to see, you know, a point guard who's willing to guard Steph Curry, willing to guard Ja Morant, and then go give him buckets on the other end. There it is, DeMichael Cole, Grizzlies beat writer, co-host of Locked On Grizzlies. DeMichael, thank you very much, and enjoy the game. I know we will on New Year's Eve, and we will definitely have you back on. Look, if the Grizzlies keep doing their thing, we might be having a conversation before the playoffs or during the playoffs. Yeah, hey, hey, man, um, don't don't count them out yet. Just 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 keep, keep a little close eye on them in the standards, and we'll see where it goes. Definitely, definitely. Happy New Year, DeMichael. We'll talk to you soon. All right, happy New Year's, guys. Take care. Got to get to a break. When we get back in 2012, a very small number of players averaged over 20 points per game in the NBA. There are currently more than double that. What does that mean? We'll discuss. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. The 49ers finally.